I've seen a lot of bad takes this NFL offseason, but I don't think that this one can be topped. What's going on, football fans? It's Mitch here, back with another NFL reaction video. And of course, we have Uncle Colin Cowherd back with a flaming hot take that the Denver Broncos might actually be a good football team going against everything that I believe in for the 2024 NFL season. So let's check out what Colin has to say. But first, Gronk spike the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more NFL reactions just like this. And let me know in the comments, is this the dumbest take you've ever heard? Let me know in the comments, guys. Let's go. Let's react to some Colin Cowherd, baby. I love it. I love it a lot. Okay. So here we go. We've got Mr. Colin with the takes. Whew. So Bo Nix, let's talk about him. I had said this. I saw him play live twice in college, once up close, right behind the Oregon sideline, and once, you know, in the stands and uh, from the end zone. So I had seen a lot of him. So he's seen a lot of him in college. Okay, so Bo Nix, has he earned the starting job in Denver? I always thought he was going to be the starter. As soon as they drafted him, I felt like you can't start Zach Wilson. That's embarrassing. And Jared Stidham, there's no upside to that and starting Jared Stidham. So you have to start Bo Nix, right? You have to. I'm in college live. I watched a lot of his starts. I remember as a freshman, him at Auburn, I think beating Justin Herbert in Oregon. And... Um, he really, he had like 61 college starts. So we kind of know what we have. And uh, usually, by the way, yes, a lot of starts can be good. But also at the same time, older quarterback prospects, players that play more in college and dominate later in their careers, typically not the best indication that you're going to be fantastic in the NFL. Typically, early declares have more success. Uh, here's what is really, I mean, the NFL is by far and away the biggest domestic sport. Like it's not close. It's the English premier league in, you know, in, in London, it's not close. So this is why the NFL is, is king. If Bo Nix hits all the Denver problems wash away immediately. Like See, I don't know about that. Like, what are we talking about in terms of Bo Nix hitting? Is he, Patrick Mahomes, then sure. Is he Josh Allen? Sure. Is he CJ Stroud? Sure. Is he Tua? Is he Baker? Because if that's the case, no. I, I don't think the problems go away. Their receiving core is still really below average. Cortland Sutton's their only proven reliable target, and he's getting a little bit older at this point. Their tight end, pretty thin there. Greg Dulcich, I guess, has potential. Devontae Williams looking good in camp, looking like he's ready to rock and ready to roll for 2024, but he's coming off the worst season of his young career. The O-line did lose a piece or two in the offseason, specifically Lloyd Cushenberry at center. So I'm not exactly sold on the supporting cast for Bonix, making his life more difficult as a rookie. And defensively, at the beginning of last year, they were one of the worst defenses in NFL history. Now they fixed that because there's only one way to go up from there. But they don't have a lot of marquee names on this defense, really, when you think about it. Like Zach Allen and John Franklin Myers and Pat Sertan are probably like the most well-known players on their defense to NFL fans, that's, that's not the greatest thing you've ever heard, right? It's like the Houston Texans. They were the biggest laughing stock in the league. And now they're the model how to turn a franchise mm -hmm. around because they got the quarterback right. That's not all they got right, though. Like, Nick Casario has done a great job, a phenomenal job. I thought he was doing a great job even before he picked C.J. Stroud, just in terms of, like, slowly but surely reworking that roster, adding a lot of veteran players, trying to find the pieces that fit, you know, then getting multiple draft picks, using those in the right places. But to me, like, the Texans got coach right, D'Amico Ryans. They got offensive coordinator right, Bobby Slowick. They got Will Anderson right. Derek Stingley taking some time, but it appears they got that right. Nico Collins was able to be elevated by C.J. Stroud, but there is no Nico Collins, a young player that's ascending on offense in Denver. There is no 
mid-round to late-round receiver like Tank Dell. Maybe that's Franklin, maybe that's Mims, but so far the indications are the opposite. There really isn't a Laramie Tunzel on the Broncos, right? There isn't a reliable, I guess you could say Cortland Sutton is like the Dalton Schultz, maybe, but there isn't really like the same archetype of a team. They haven't really gone out there and improved their team through veteran additions, like guys like Jerry Hughes. And even last year, guys like Sheldon Rankins or guys like, you know, just all these players, Malik Collins, who they had, or like these guys, Jimmy Ward, who they added, like all these veterans, like there's just not really that in Denver. They haven't gone out there and completely reworked the top to bottom of their roster. I just don't see that at all. And they got the coach right. And they just happened to come in the same year. I mean, think about the Russell Wilson. At least he mentioned the coach. Denver deal. Just think about what this franchise did. Gave up a ton of draft capital. Good picks. They paid a fortune. They whiffed on their head coaching hire. Like badly whiffed. Uh, They were in cap hell. Agree. In a division with Patrick Mahomes. Like. And nobody else. That's not a good spot to be in. So they hire Sean Payton. And they write the ship. They get Russell Wilson to be the best version of what he can be. They kind of write the offense. I agree with that too. Offense as much as they can. I also will say though, I think Russ can still play at that level that he played in Denver in Pittsburgh. I don't think Russ is the same player he was in Seattle in his prime, which I would give credit to Sean Payton for managing him. But at the same time, like Russ did play pretty well. And I feel like he's not even the type of quarterback that Sean Payton ideally would want. And Russ doesn't ideally want to play in a Sean Payton offense. It wasn't a great marriage to begin with. It was almost like finding the best possible quarterback guru that you could to fix this guy. But honestly, like it wasn't exactly the best mesh of philosophy between the two people. And if Bo Nix hits, they're the Texans. All the stuff disappears. You've got... But again, like how many quarterbacks have hit like CJ Stroud? How many quarterbacks have hit like that, that quickly, that rapidly, that impressively? What are we talking about here? You know, a lot of the quarterbacks that were successful as rookies were also on phenomenal teams. RG3 with the Shanahans, McVay, LaFleur, all those coaches, and all that talent surrounding him. A great running scheme, right, to support him. Andrew Luck is really one of the lone cases. Andrew Luck elevated the Colts. CJ Stroud elevated the Texans. Justin Herbert elevated the Chargers, but he didn't even win a lot of games, right? So that's something people forget. Dak was on an absolute all-star team who would have done the same thing with Tony Romo, if not probably done better with Tony Romo, to be honest. Mac Jones kind of had a great defense, good situation, good offensive coordinator. Mac was kind of a manager, right? Mark Sanchez was a manager. These guys that were like early in their careers, a lot of them, there's very few that elevated their team. Matt Ryan kind of took the Falcons from the absolute bottom of the barrel to a competent team, but there was also a lot of change, almost very Texans-like in that situation as well. So I don't know what what is hitting with Bo Nix. But a quarterback you're not paying anything to, it'll clean up your cap, you'll be winning games, mm-hmm. and everybody will forget about it. That's that's not the NFL gives you microwavable stars. Heat them up a little bit, ready to roll. Every other sport in this country. The, I will say basketball, it's pretty easy to become relevant if you get like one or two good players. In basketball, if you have like two really good players, honestly, you could sign them both in the same offseason the way the NBA is nowadays. I I would say baseball is a little bit different, but you can also pay for talent in baseball if you're in the right city, right situation, right franchise. Hockey is much different. I think you need like a, a major uplifting of talent to really make it happen unless you get like a Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux type player, you're not really going to like completely change your franchise. So football, I agree with that take, but also, I don't know. The way the draft works is you got to put them in the oven, you cross your fingers, and you bake them minimum two years. 
before they can actually help you. Think how great Wemby is. Wemby's the best prospect ever, including LeBron. I was telling my wife this weekend, he can do things LeBron can't. I mean, there'll be many things that Wemby will do that LeBron could never do. Is he going to have the same career, legacy? Who knows? Titles? Who knows? But as great as he is, he goes to the Spurs. They don't win one more game. They're awful without him. They're awful with him. And they won't be any good this year. That's, that's the way everything else works. The NFL. But, again, like we've seen with LeBron, he's just picked different teams and gone and won championships. So, I don't know. I guess maybe for rookies, that's the case. I, I, maybe I'll give him that. The coach is competent. The quarterback's really good. All your problems go away. That's true. And I'm, and I'm watching the Denver game, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, this, this has a Peyton Breeze. Think about how bad. This is where he's going off the deep end. Bo Nix is not Drew Brees. I'm, I'm going out on a limb, guys, and I am going to make a statement, a very bold one, that Bo Nix will not be Drew Brees. Let me know if you disagree in the comments. Bad the Saints were. The Saints were the laughing stock in the National Football League. Pre-Brees and Peyton. Yes, but Drew Brees was already a good player with the Chargers. The Houston Texans. They also had a historically good draft, if I'm not mistaken. Were the laughing stock in the NFL, pre-D'Amico Ryans and, and C.J. Stroud. Yes, but they also added Tank Dell. They added Will Anderson. Stingley was healthier. Many things were in line with them. And that... that core of players that depth i think you're underestimating here colin how much talent the texans already had on their team that really needed a quarterback to make it happen i think that is what is missing here the broncos do not have the same level of talent that the texans had they had a lot of players and they even brought in some last offseason and nicks looked exactly like he looked in college Oregon schemed him up. Sean Payton schemed him up. Accurate, available, doesn't get hurt, experienced. Boom. And we are in a very impatient society. I'm a that to me, though, sounds like a game manager. That does not sound like a game changer like C.J. Stroud. As guilty as anybody, the NFL is the sport that rewards you. And I'm just watching this, and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, two years ago, the Denver Broncos knew by the end of of the first game of Nathaniel Hackett's first game as a head coach. Remember the game in Seattle? Mm -hmm. It was Pete Carroll facing Russell Wilson. By the Seattle was good, though. End of the first game, you're like, Nathaniel Hackett doesn't understand the clock. Like, Oh, yeah, Hackett's a joke. There's no question about that. Sean Payton is a big upgrade over Nathaniel Hackett. But I am not sold on Bo Nix. I'm not sold on him. I need time. And even if Bo Nix is good... How good are the Broncos? And that's my point. Now, maybe if he's C.J. Stroud, they win 10 games. But if he's, again, Tua, how many games does Tua win on this team? Eight? Seven? Like, this is one of the worst franchises, rosters in the NFL. It is. Like, literally does not understand how to use the clock. It was... I tried to defend it. It, it. it was awful. You tried to and defend. they had to eventually like hire somebody who could handle the clock. I forgot about that. So it all disappears if Bo Nix can play. And it was great. I'm watching Jaden Daniels. What's the grossest franchise in the NFL? You know, Cleveland or Washington the last seven, eight years. Dan Snyder mess. I would say honestly, Washington right now is like the least appetizing to me. They, they are going through a little bit of a rebuild, retooling, all that stuff, like a re-imaging. But to me, I don't know. It's probably like the logo or the colors. Like, they just do not get me excited. Could all be solved. Uh, Chicago, Jurassic, you know, they can't get offense right. They've never had one great quarterback that's had a 12-year run. It could all be solved. Look at what the Bears did, though. Did the Broncos go and draft Roma Dunze and 
trade for Keenan Allen and sign DeAndre Swift? Like, am I missing something? All that really happened is they lost Justin Simmons. They lost Jerry Judy. Like, again, these other teams have gone through more. They've done more to help these quarterbacks. They already have something in place for these quarterbacks. But even if Bo Nix is like Mac Jones was as a rookie, this team is not as talented as that Patriots team. That defense is not even close. And and now Denver, most of my life, has been like the Steelers with mountain ranges. You know, it's like kind of well-run, smart, some trophies, uh, you know, a semi viable John Elway. Viable. They've had, you know, your Peyton Manning, your John Elway. Mike Shanahan. Your Big Ben, your Terry Bradshaw. They've had big stars. And it's like... I definitely say the Steelers are classes ahead of the Broncos. Broncos have had a couple of runs, but come on. They, they were a mess. And you're like... How do, I mean, I'm, I was thinking a year ago. Like, how do you get out of this? They're still a mess. They suck. They suck. I, I mean, Deshaun Watson, for all the issues, can still play. Like, Did he just say Deshaun Watson? Wait. Let me scroll back. This guy just say Deshaun Watson can still play? Deshaun Watson, for all the issues, can still play. I think I have Russell, to shut this like, video off. Sean Payton doesn't like him. Who has watched a Sean Watson is like, yeah, you know what? That guy, he's better than Russell Wilson. What? The drugs. And he can't play. How do you get out of it? Draft Bo Nix. If, if that's <laughs> How do you get out of the hole? Let's just draft Bo Nix, the sixth drafted quarterback in the draft. What was he like, the fifth? Oh, bro. Even if it, like, helps for, like, a year. Like, Bo Nix, to me, I don't, just don't, I just don't see it, man. Like, at best, I see it as, like, Mac Jones, where he was, like, good for a year. And then, like, he's just not good enough to kind of uplift people around him. He's just kind of, like, a manageable system player. Now, with Sean Payton, that might be better because he's an offensive-minded guy. But he's not Drew Brees, okay? And I'm going to end it there. Wow. This is one of the worst takes I've ever seen in the history of I've ever seen. And that's all I got to say about that, to be honest with you. So, yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments. It's Mitch. Deuces.